Hi, my name is Abraham, and I'm your big brother in recovery. Thank you for coming back to another educational video uh, based on the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Many of you know that uh, I'm a person in long-term recovery, and my whole motive is simply to help people in recovery to achieve sustainable sobriety. But one of the ways that we do this, well, the main way that we do it, is we use the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous to do it. You know, I very rarely give my opinions. Uh, so everything that I attempt to do comes strictly from the book, merely because they were successful in their endeavors with helping people to recover. You know, I got some good stuff for you, and i like to do a couple of shout-outs to a good couple of friends of mine. Big Sid, thank you so much, man. I love you. Herman and everybody else who I didn't call, you know, I watch you, and I, I watch you grow, and I'm very excited about the things that you're doing, and thank you for helping me to educate our culture and change the culture of recovery because we do recover. So I want to dive right in. You know, one of the things I want to talk about is success, you know, because we have a proven successful system. Only if we follow what the, our sponsors, those more than 100 men and women said, we will ultimately get what they got. What did they get? They recovered. What did they recover from? A seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. How did they recover? Well, they told us that too. I'm going to get to all of that. But one of the things I want to show you is the numbers. So let's deal with the numbers. The numbers don't lie. Go with me to Roman numeral page XX. And while you're doing that, I want to, again, thank everybody for tuning in again and leaving your comments. And our last video, Principles Before Personalities, we're building on that right now because to summarize it all, your personality is not you. It's a learned behavior. And that's why we have to use a new set of principles, which I gave you the definition to, behind all of the 12 steps because our personality is a learned behavior. So when we unlearn what we've learned and learn these new principles and attempt to practice them in all of our affairs, we start to continue the psychic change. No one among us has been able to maintain anything like perfect adherence to these principles, but guess what? We are striving for progress, not perfection. At least I am. Now, with that being said, would you kindly go with me to Roman numeral page XX20? We're going to see back then in the 40s, they had a 75% success rate. So the question is always in my mind, what did they do then that we're not doing now? But let's look because the numbers don't lie. At the top of the page, right after the comma, public acceptance of AA grew by leaps and bounds. In other words, the public accepted AA. For this, there were two principal reasons, two reasons why AA was accepted by leaps and bounds. One, the large number of recoveries. Two, reunited homes. I don't know about you, but I think these were the two original promises. Uh, they didn't promise you anything other than you wouldn't really die from the, res your, the results of your addiction. And you could be reunited with your family. Yes, I know later on in the book they said in some cases the wife will never come back. But that's no excuse for you not to recover. These made their impressions everywhere. Now here come the numbers. Of alcoholics who came to AA and really tried, underline really tried, look what happened to them. 50% got sober. How soon? At once. And remained that way. Wow. Half off the top got sober at once that really tried, and they remained that way. 25% sobered up after some uh, uh, relapses. And as I often say, I never say relapse is a part of recovery, but I do say people do relapse. Why? The page 59 tells us in the first sentence, rarely have we seen a person fail. I just erased the word or put a line through the word fail and put relapse there. 
because one relapse could kill you. That's why I don't say relapse is a part of recovery. And among the remainders, those who stayed on with AA showed improvement. You mean the person who wasn't even working on nothing, just making 12-step groups showed improvement? Yes, because they wouldn't have missed the betterment. They replaced the old people, place, and things with the new people, place, and things. And guess what? They started to get better. Now look at this. Other thousands came to a few AA meetings and first decided they didn't want the program. I don't need that program. I don't need a sponsor. I need a good job. Here's an Abrahamism. Never work harder on a job than you do on yourself. What happens when you lose the job? But great numbers of these, about two out of three, begin to return as time passed. So what did they do differently? And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about a topic, and this may be part one of a number of ones to come. But the title of today's video is The Steps We Took. And we're going to talk about how soon they took them, and that's going to blow your mind. So we just saw that the success rate was 75%. So let's keep looking and find out why. Would you kindly go with me to forward to the first edition? A very familiar piece of work. Forward to the first edition. Let's look at something. It says, We of Alcoholics Anonymous are more than 100 men and women who have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. They just told us what they recovered from. They didn't say a disease. They identified addiction as a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. In other words, seemingly means apparent. Hopeless state of mind and body. What's missing? Sounds like spiritual solution. Notice what they say next. To show other alcoholics precisely or exactly how we have recovered is the main purpose of this book. For them, meaning the person suffering from the seemingly hopeless state of mind and body, we hope these pages will prove so convincing that no further authentication will be necessary. That means authentication means proof. We think this account of our experiences will help everyone to better understand the alcoholic. Many don't do not comprehend that the alcoholic is a very sick person. And besides, we are sure that our way of living has its advantages for all. I interpret that as all 12-step programs because guess what? I'm not addicted to narcotics, cocaine, alcohol was a symptom of the problem. It wasn't the problem. So therefore, anybody that read that line could have just used this one book to recover. But I'm not here to do that. You know, I'm, I'm here to empower, not to enslave people. Uh, so right away, it tells us that they've recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. But again, how did they do it? You remember the title of this video is The Steps We Took. So they just told us what the problem was, seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Now, guess what? They, I want to turn. want you to turn to, let's see. Give me a second here. I want you to turn to, where is it at? Forward to the, uh, give me a second, give me a second here, give me a second. I want you to turn to Roman numeral page XXV, doctor's opinion, and I want you to read the first sentence. We of Alcoholics Anonymous, there they go again. Believe that the reader will be interested in the medical estimate of the plan of recovery described in this book. So guess what? They told us they recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body, but now they're telling us where the plan of recovery is located. Is located in the book. It might not be in the meeting. It might not be in your sponsor. 
What if your sponsor hasn't read the book? I'm not throwing your sponsor under the bus. There are a lot of great sponsors out there, and there are a lot of great meetings out there. But you have to take time to read for yourself, because if you don't, guess what? As Malcolm said, if you want to hide something from somebody, put it in a book, they'll never find it. So they're telling us where the program is located. And I told you in the last video, most of the fellowship, not all, most, stop reading the book. That's why they don't know. That's why they say all kinds of things that is not in here. That's the purpose why we started this channel, because I want to see my brothers and sisters recover like I have. In other words, I want for my brothers and sisters what I want for myself. Now, we've seen they've recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. We found out where the plan of recovery is located at in the book because they call this book our basic text, our basic textbook. A textbook is not only to be read, but to be studied. And I'll let you in on a secret. The more I learn, the less I find out I know after 38 years of being here, right? Now watch this. I want to take you to page 29. Go to page 29. It's going to be interesting what they're going to say. Page 29. Let's look at the first sentence, paragraph, whatever you want to call it. But it tells us, further on, Clear-cut or simple directions are given, showing how we recovered. So that coincides with what they told us in Forward to the First Edition. We of Alcoholics Anonymous are uh, more than 100 men and women who have recovered ED from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. In other words, we're going to show you precisely how did we did it or exactly how we did it. So here they repeat themselves by telling you further on. Clear-cut directions are given, showing how we recovered. And it tells you about the personal stories. These are followed by 42 personal experiences. So we already know they're talking about the first 164 pages when they're talking about the clear-cut directions. Now, what I need to show you is something interesting. Would you go with me to page 58? Page 58. I want to show you something that I found to be my sponsor showed me many years ago. Yes, I know we got 12 steps and I know what the 13th is. Don't do that one, but that's when men, you inject women with the program of recovery or women, you do whatever you do to whoever you do it, but that's bad stuff. So you don't want to do no 13 stepping, but I will turn you on to something that my sponsor turned me on to. And that is, you remember the clear cut directions? The title of this video is The Steps We Took. Watch this. I'm going to turn you on to something called Step Zero. Step Zero. Why Step Zero? You never heard of it, have you? But I'm going to show it to you in our book. It's a prerequisite for the 12. And it asks you a question that only you can answer. Go with me to page 58. Look at the second paragraph. They're about to tell us the qualifications for giving a lead, and we know that message has to have depth and weight. It told us that earlier. But our stories disclose in a general way what we used to be like, what happened, and what we're like now. That's the spiel, right? Now watch this. Here comes step zero. If you have decided you want what we have and are willing to go to any list to get it, then you're ready to take certain steps. See, you learned something by just coming. Prerequisite right here. In business, especially in computers, there's something called a uh, uh, if-then-else statement. And when you get to the problem, the triangle, it says, if this happens, then we do that. So look what they're telling us here. If you've decided you want what we have, based on all the stuff you read up to page 58, and are willing, remember honest, open-minded, and willing, to go to any length to get it, then you're ready to take certain steps. Step zero. Now watch this. Let me show you what the next page says. At some of these, we balk. Balked at what? The steps. We thought we could find an easy, softer way, but we could not. 
Now on page 59, it tells us half measures avail us nothing. We stood at the turning point. We asked his protection and care with complete abandon. Notice the title of our video, the steps we took. Here are the steps we took which are suggested as a program of recovery. Notice it didn't say the meetings we made. Notice it didn't say anything about our sponsor and about our fellowship. It says the steps we took. Took is a verb, an action word. I have to do something in order to get something. But here is the question. I want to probably do this in a couple of parts, but this is part one. The question is, how soon do we take them? Let me explain something to you. I do a meeting on Tuesday nights, and it's well attended, uh, 50 people at least. And we physically do the steps in there, and I'm going to blow your mind. We do them in five weeks, in five sessions. I'm going to show you something, and I know some of you are like ready to cut this off, but let me prove my case because the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous is our filter. This is our guide or our text. I'm going to show you that all our four founders did it in a short period of time. Some of them as soon as three days. Bill W. did it in one day. I'm going to show it to you. Right, And once I show it to you, you can't listen to these myths out there about take a step a year, take your time, when you're ready, do it. No, because guess what? We suffer from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. The only way to overcome that is to have a spiritual awakening. Step 12. After you, or in other words, in order to have the spiritual awakening, we have to take the steps. And guess what we have to do? We have to take the steps. You ready for this? As fast as humanly possible. I'm going to prove it to you how they did it in 1940. And it's in your big book. Now notice something. Think about it. The further you get away from pain, the less motivated you are to take any steps. Because you forgot that you were a very sick person and you think just because you clean, you sober. Clean means abstinent because our program is a program of entire abstinence. But you can get clean and never get sober. But you can never get sober without first getting clean. You only get sober, sobriety, after you do step 12. How do I know it? Read the first part of the three parts of step 12. Having had past tense a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps. So guess what the goal of taking the 12 steps are? Is to have a spiritual awakening. Notice what it says next. <clears throat> After you had that spiritual awakening, we tried to carry this message. There are many messages to carry, but you remember this message to alcoholics, and that message is a message of hope. We do recover and to practice these principles in all our affairs. You remember, look at the prior video, 12 principles for 12 steps. There's a principle after every step because the principles change the personality. Now, I said, and it's a bold statement, that in order to recover our four founders, they did it at once. That's why the title of this step is The Steps We Took at once. I'm going to prove it to you. But let's look at how did our co-founder do it? How did Bill do it? Well, let's take a look. But before we get to Bill, let's look at who sponsored Bill. I believe we can honestly say it was Ebby. So let's go to page eight and let's look at what Ebby did. Now, we already know, if you don't, go back and look at some of my old videos. Ebby, <coughs> excuse me, Ebby pops up on the scene because he's one of Bill's old drinking friends. Bill's at his wit's end, and Ebby pops up, gives him a call out of the blue, where really it was divine, and comes over. So let's pick up the story on the bottom of page eight. My musa was interrupted by the telephone. The cheery voice of an old school friend asked if he might come over. That's Ebby. 
He was sober. It was years since I could remember his coming to New York in that condition. I was amazed. Rumor had it that he had been committed for alcoholic insanity. I wondered how he had escaped. Now think about it. Back then you had detox and you had insane asylums, right? That's why Bill said he thought he had been committed for alcoholic insanity because they didn't know what we know now. That's why uh, Alcoholics Anonymous is so monumental. Now notice the bottom of the page. They had told, in other words, the last paragraph, but he didn't know Ranning. In a matter of fact way, he told how two men had appeared in court. Two men from the Oxford group appeared on Ebby's behalf. They had recovered, so guess what? They persuaded the judge to suspend his commitment. You remember? Detox or committed to an insane asylum for alcohol insanity. They had told of a simple religious idea. Uh-oh. That sounds like step uh, two to me. And a practical program of action. Step three through 12. Because think about it. You remember? Bill went to treatment three times before he recovered. And let me give you a revelation. He couldn't recover until he got a sponsor, which is Abby. Now think about it. Dr. Dr. Silkworth gave Bill step one. But guess what? He knew the problem, but he didn't know the solution, and neither did he have the plan of action. And we're going to find out it was reversed for Dr. Silkworth. He knew the solution, but he didn't know the problem, and he didn't know the plan of action. As a matter of fact, we're going to find out Silkwork was already a member of the Oxford group. But guess what? He couldn't stay sober. Now, let's look at something. They had told these two men from the Oxford group who had recovered of a simple religious idea and practical program of action, step two and step three through 12. That was how long? Two months ago. You mean to tell me the man had recovered in two months? And the result was self-evident. It worked. Abby recovered in two months. Now hold it. Wait a minute. Keep reading. He had come to pass his experience along to me. If, you remember I told you about step zero on page 59? If you want what we have and are willing to go to any lengths to get it, then you're ready to take certain steps. If I cared to have it. I was shocked, but interested. Certainly I was interested. I had to be, for I was hopeless. Uh-oh. Now, if you go to page 17, you'll see that Bill recovered from his seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. Look what he says in the first paragraph. We of Alcoholics Anonymous know thousands of men and women, first it was hundreds, who were once just as hopeless as Bill. Nearly all have recovered. They've solved the drink problem. Now, Abby gets it to Bill, the solution and the plan of action, and Abby had been sober for two months. Now he comes to Bill. Now, guess what? Let me show you what our buddy Bill does. This is going to gas you because, if anything, we need to know what our founder, co-founder did. Both of them. I'm going to show you what both of them did, right? Would you kindly go with me to the doctor's opinion? And let's look at this. I made a statement that I'm going to prove it. Because I'm not an entertainer. I, I deal with the book. Look at the doctor's opinion on Roman numeral page XXV. Ebby, two months sober, right? Worked all the six steps. Because in the Oxford group, as you recall, they had six steps. Notice what it says in the letter to whom it may concern. Here's the doctor writing. I have specialized in the treatment of alcoholism for many years. Historically, it was 60, and he also talked about and drug addiction. In late 1934, I attended a patient who thought, he, though he had been a competent businessman of good earning capacity, was an alcoholic of a type I had come to regard as hopeless, seemingly hopeless. You remember on page 17? He recovered from that hopeless situation, so he must have did whatever he told him. Watch this. 
in the course of his third treatment. I told you Bill went to treatment three times, but the first two times, all he had was step one, the problem, powerless, unmanageable. He got that from Silkworth. He acquired certain ideas, watch this, from Ebby, concerning the possible means of recovery. As part of his rehabilitation, he commenced to present his conceptions to other alcoholics, working 12, impressing upon them that they must do like likewise with still others. This has become the basis of a rapidly growing fellowship of these men and their families. Watch this. It's going to repeat what page 17 says, first sentence. This man, Bill W., and over 100 others appear to have recovered. Now, I want to draw your attention to Roman numeral page XXVII. Watch this. Remember I told you the doctor was not only a specialist in alcoholism, but in drug addiction. The doctor writes, the subject presented in this book seems to me to be of paramount importance to those afflicted with alcohol addiction. I say this after many years' experience, watch these credentials. As medical director of one of the oldest hospitals, towns, in the country, treating alcoholic and drug addiction. Uh-oh, if my friends would have read that, they probably would have stopped. Watch this, watch this. There was there a sense of real satisfaction when I was asked to contribute a few words on a subject which is covered in such, notice this, masterly details in these pages. Now I want to skip down the paragraph for the sake of time. Read the next paragraph after uh, the third. Read the fourth, the fifth. Many years ago, talking about Bill W., one of the leading contributors to this book came under our care in this hospital, Towns. And while here, he acquired some ideas from Ebby, which he put into practical application. How soon? At once. Hold it. It didn't take him all day. It didn't take him 20 years. He didn't work a step a day. He didn't do any of that foolishness. And Bill recovered at once. As a matter of fact, if you go to page 13, you'll find out that Bill W. worked all 12 steps in one day in the hospital. And it's right here on page 13, starting with the first paragraph. At the hospital, I was separated from alcohol for the last time. Treatment seemed wise while I showed signs of DTs, hallucinating, right? Now he tells us, they are humbly offer myself to God as I then understood him to do with me as he would. I place myself unreservedly under his care, capital H, and direction. That sounds like the third step. All right, watch this. Here comes step four, five, six, and seven. I admitted for the first time that of myself I was nothing and without him I was lost. I ruthlessly faced my sins, that sounds like step four, but sins is a biblical word, and became willing to have my newfound friend, that's capital F, so that's God, take them away, root and branch. Root is the spiritual, branch is the natural. So guess what? He had his high power uproot all his character defects so they couldn't come back again. I had not had a drink since. He just did step four, five, six, and seven. Now here comes Ebby. My schoolmate visited me and I fully acquainted him with my problems and deficiencies. We notice what he said. Watch how they did step four. We made a list of people I had heard of towards whom I felt resentment. Notice he didn't say I made the list because when he was in the hospital, you forgot he was suffering from DTs. The man was shaking. He couldn't write his own stuff. So back then, the sponsors would help the new man or the prospect right they fourth step because they didn't want to let a delay stop them from the spiritual awakening. Notice what he says next. Here comes step, step eight. I express my entire willingness to approach these individuals admitting my wrongs. Did he, did he go do it out the hospital? Not yet, but at least he was willing. Never was I to be critical of them. I was to write all such matters to the utmost of my ability. The next paragraph, for sake of time, gives up step 10 and 11. Notice what he does next. My friend, which is Ebby, here come the promise. Promise, when these things were done, I would enter upon a new relationship with my creator. 
that I would have the elements of a way of living which answered all my problems. Sound like step 12. So watch this. Bill W. worked all 12 steps at once in the hospital bed. You just saw it. You can't refute that. But let me show you what happened with Dr. Bob. I'd like to draw your attention <coughs> to once Bill recovered, because Evie recovered, then Evie gave it to Bill. Now, guess what Bill has to do? In order for him to keep what he had, he's got to give it away. Go to Roman numeral page XV. I, let's look at what Bill does after he recovered. Last paragraph. The physician, that's Dr. Bob, had repeatedly, told you he was a member of the Oxford group, tried spiritual means. He knew the solution, but he didn't know the problem. To resolve his alcoholic dilemma or problem, but had failed. But when the broker, Bill W., gave him Dr. Silkworth's description, because Bill got step one from Dr. Silkworth, of alcoholism and its hopelessness. You remember those people? We recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. The physician began to pursue the spiritual remedy for his malady with a willingness he had never before been able to muster. He sobered never to drink again up to the moment of his death in 1950. He seemed to prove that one alcoholic can affect another as no non-alcoholic could. How soon you think Dr. Bob applied it? At once like Abby and Bill did. Now notice something. It got so good to them two to look what they did next. It also indicated that strenuous, what an adjective, work one alcoholic with another was vital to permanent recovery. They was trying to hurry up and get guys sober. Now notice something. Now they're going to go and find the third man in recovery, which is a guy named Bill Dobson, was a lawyer, big time lawyer. Now let's look at this guy. Next paragraph. Hence the two men, Bill and Bob, set to work almost frantically, powerful word, upon alcoholics arriving in the ward at the Akron City Hospital. That's where Dr. Bob worked. So as they were coming in detox, the, a book called Passing On says Dr. Bob sponsored over 5,000 men, and he was doing it. He was taking them through all 12 steps in about a week maximum. The very first case, their very first case, notice this word, a desperate one. Look how quick he recovered immediately and became AA number three. He never had another drink. And I'll show you what they did with Bill Dobson. Go to, I believe it is, page, let me see here, page 14. Bill recovered immediately. Abby recovered immediately. Dr. Bob recovered immediately. Now notice what Bill says, and I'm going to follow back up with with, with, with Bill Dobson, AA number three. But look at what Bill said on page 14. Bill kept going to the top of the page and said, simple but not easy. A price had to be paid. I often say sobriety is free with recovery costs. You know, fate without works is dead. Watch this. It meant destruction of self-centeredness. I must turn in all things to the Father of lights who presides over us all. In other words, I got to trust the process. Notice what Bill's going to say. These were revolutionary and drastic proposals. But the moment I fully accepted them, the effect was electric. There was a sense of victory followed by such a peace and serenity as I had never known. There was utter confidence. I felt lifted up as though the great clean wind of a mountaintop blew through and through. God comes to most men gradually, but his impact on me was sudden and profound. Man had a spiritual awakening. And he almost lost, he almost went crazy because look what he told the doctor next. For a moment, I was alarmed to call my friend the doctor to ask if I was still sane. Isn't that interesting? Spiritual awakening. He recovered while he was in the hospital. And I told you the idea for AA was born two paragraphs down while I lay in the hospital. The thought came that there were thousands of hopeless, because he's no longer 
alcoholics who might be glad to have what had been so freely given to me, perhaps I could help some of them. Then in turn, they might work with others because guess what he understood? Yeah, he knew our primary purpose, but guess what Bill found out? Our ultimate purpose and oh, our real purpose on page 77. Look at the third line on top of page 77. Our real purpose is to fit ourselves to be of maximum service to God and the people about us. In other words, when I help others, I help myself. This is why I started this channel, right? So I can take you through this and let you see. I'm not a replacement for a sponsor, but guess what? I can help you by showing you this. Now we've seen Ebby recovered in two months. He brings it to Bill, Doc, Bill, Bill Wilson. Bill recovers immediately while he in the hospital, page uh, 13 and 14. Bill brings it to Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob's in the Oxford group. He knows the, the, the solution, the spiritual, but the minute he explained to him what another doctor told him, he got it because guess what Bill didn't tell him? The solution without telling him the problem. So he realized the mental obsession, the physical craving, causes an abnormal reaction or a allergic reaction. He figured it out once he told him that. Now I'm going to show you something Dr. Bob did. This is going to blow your mind. Go with me to page 156. 156. Let's see something here. Do you know Dr. Bob? messed around and did his ninth step in one day? I'm going to show it to you. Page 156. Look at this. First paragraph. First and second paragraph. One morning, he took the bull by the horns, talking about Dr. Bob, and set out to tell those he feared what he troubled, what his trouble had been. He found himself surprisingly well received and learned that many knew of his drinking because you know he was ashamed of it alcoholics wanted to remain anonymous big time doctor stepping into his car watch this he made the rounds of people he had hurt mm. he trembled as he went about for this might mean ruin particularly to a person in his line of business he's a doctor notice what it says he started in the morning, but watch this. At midnight, he came home exhausted, <coughs> excuse me, but very happy. Why? He has not had a drink since. Well, we found that out from 1950, but this is a continuation. As we shall see, he now means a great deal to his community and the major, major liabilities of, watch this, 30 years of hard drinking had been repaired in four hours. That's interesting, isn't it? Interesting. Now notice, we want to finish with Bill Dobson, and I'm going to conclude. Bill Dobson messed around, and notice what they said they did. But life was not easy for the two friends, Bill and Bob. Plenty of difficulties presented themselves. Both saw that they must keep spiritually active. In other words, we can't rest on our laurels. We got to remain spiritually fit. In other words, being right with God ourselves and go do some service work, help others. Now here they're going to talk about, <coughs> they're going to talk about Bill Dobson. One day they called up the head nurse of a local hospital. That was the hospital Dr. Bob was working at. Because you remember the two men went to work almost frantically. They explained their need and inquired if she had a first-class alcoholic prospect. Remember they called him a desperate one? As a matter of fact, this man, alcoholic member number three, was so violent, he had just blacked two nurses' eyes, and the nurses were male. Let's find out for ourselves. She replied, yes, we got a corker. He's just beating up a couple of nurses, male nurses. Goes off his head completely when he's drinking, but he's a grand chap when he's sober. Though he's been in here eight times in the last six months, understand he was once a well-known lawyer in town. Told he was a lawyer. 
But just now, we got him strapped down tight. They had the man in restraints because he was so labile, right? I've worked on those kind of units where you have to five-point restrain people. That's why I don't work on them no more because I didn't feel comfortable doing it. Read your asterisk at the bottom. This refers to Bill and Dr. Bob's first visit to AA number three. I told you. Here was a prospect, all right, but by the description, none too promising, hopeless. The use of spiritual principles in such cases was not so well understood as it is now, but one of the friends said, that was Dr. Bob, put him in a private room. Then you'll read what happens next. Then it goes to the paragraph, uh, second paragraph. Said one of the visitors, we're going, we're, we're giving you a treatment for alcoholism. In other words, you suffer from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. You need to have a spiritual awakening. And the only way to do that is take the steps. Remember the title of the video? The steps we took. How soon? Immediately. Now I'm going to show you. This man did the steps in three days. And they asked him to go and sponsor people. Three days. They will put me out of a meeting if I couldn't prove this. I got to show you this. Watch. Hopeless was written large on the man's face as he replied. Oh, but that's no use. Nothing would fix me. I'm a goner. The last three times I got drunk the way home from here. Usually people get the statistics says nine out of ten people usually relapse within the first 30 days after leaving the treatment center. I'm afraid to go out the door. I can't understand it. Notice what they did. For an hour, the two friends, Bill and Bob, told about their drinking experiences. Over and over, he would say, that's me, that's me. I drank like that. He looked for similarities, not differences. Now watch this. Guess what they told him about the mental obsession and the physical craving. Read the paragraph. The man in the bed, you saw the picture, the two men talking to the man in bed, AA number three, was told of the acute poisoning from which he suffered, how it deteriorated the body of an alcoholic and warped his mind. There was much talk about the mental state preceding the first drink. So they told him the problem and the solution. Watch this. Go down to the bottom of the page. The two friends spoke of their spiritual experience. Told you. And told him about the course of action they carried out. When did they do it? Immediately. He interrupted. He started talking about church. I used to be strong for the church. Notice the next, the, the next paragraph. This is where I'm going to close at. The second paragraph on page 158. On the, watch this, third day. The lawyer, which is AA number three, Bill Dobson, gave his life to the care and direction of his creator and said he was perfectly willing to do anything necessary. That sounds like he took step three. His wife came scarcely daring to be hopeful. Thought she, though she thought she saw something different about her husband already, he had begun to have a what? Spiritual experience already. Three days. Notice what it says. Because detox at that time was three, not 28. That afternoon, he put on his clothes and walked from the hospital a free man. He had recovered. Watch this. It goes on, if you keep reading, it goes on and it starts talking about AA number four. But this is what I'm going to hit you with. Go to page 190. Page 190. Watch this. I told you they wanted the man to start sponsoring people in three days. That's how they did it then. I don't know what we're doing now. Remember the numbers? Look at the top of page 190. I had a helper whom I could rely upon who wouldn't fail me. Talk about God. If I could, could stick to him and listen, I would make it. I remember when the boys, Bill and Bob, came back. I told them I have, I have gone to this higher power and I have told him that I am willing to put his world first above everything. Thy will be done, not mine. I have already done it, step three, and I am willing to do it again here in the presence of you or I am willing to say it in any place, anywhere, in the world from now on and not be ashamed of it. 
Now I want you to drop down to the next paragraph and read, read the, the last part of that paragraph. <clears throat> of course, we talked over quite a number of the failings that I had had and made a sort of an inventory for step four, which wasn't too difficult. I don't know why the myth in AA is that step four is so difficult. I show people how to do it in less than an hour. Because I had an awful lot of things wrong that were very apparent to me. Notice what Bill and Bob's going to say, and I'm going to close with this. Then they said, <coughs> there is one other thing. You should go out and take this program, you remember the one you found in this book, to somebody else who needs it and wants it. In other words, the man worked all six steps, because you remember at that time it was six, in the hospital in detox in three days. Bill did it in one. Dr. Bob got it. Abby got it in two months. So watch this. In three days... AA number three. Now you see why they said immediately was sober. Look, I really hope I made some sense to you. I know, I know it was long, but guess what? I'd rather be long and have some depth and weight than to be talking for 90 minutes about all the different places uh, uh, I got high at. I don't want to hear drug law. Give me something that's some merit. If you enjoyed this video, please at the bottom. Leave me a comment. By all means, press the like and help me share this message of recovery because that's our duty to do such a thing. If, if you are interested, leave me a comment and I'll share with you where we hold the meeting every Tuesday night from 6 p.m. to 7.30 where I said we go through all 12 steps in five sessions five, in a month, one month or a month and a half, all 12, okay? I just proved it to you. These are the steps we took, and guess what? When do we take them? At once. Why? Because the quicker you get to a spiritual awakening, the quicker you will recover and you will be relieved from the seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. I love you, and as they often say, keep coming back, more to be revealed. I'll talk to you. I'm your big brother Abraham in recovery.